all we out here doing eat our food things checking out the landscape the culinary landscape that is and the different things that we call you know food here in Trinidad but not the usual not your doubles not your roti not your bacon shack different things different influences to make up this diverse Trinity food scene that we have today first up is by Terence as the pile place right so I'm going in and check out um don't really know what I'm going to order per se I will find out. I'll ask for recommendations, right? So let me check it out. Greetings. Hola, ¿qué tal? Thanks for having me. No, al contrario. All right. Thank you to have to have you with us. All right. Um, want to try out stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Don't know what I have. I'm looking at the menu. Pretty diverse, but. I'll take your recommendation. Okay, so how hungry are you? I am hungry-ish into very hungry. Anywhere in between that. Okay, so at this time I think you could have a nice plato llanero. Desayuno llanero. Desayuno. Llanero. Desayuno llanero. Correct. Ah, cool. Right. That has a little bit of all the elements of mm -hmm. our country in it. Yeah? And, and I think it would be a nice and I showcase of what, you, what you're doing here. Correct. All right. I think well, that's something good. Spot on. I will try that. Very well. Thank you very much. So you have a little bit of everything. Our queso blanco, our black beans, shredded beef, eggs, avocado, planting, and our sauces together with the areca. <coughs> So together with this, what you happen to drink? Um, Would you no, like I'm, a nice warm cup of coffee or um, natural what juice? What would you recommend to make the complete experience? Well, it is, for me, a nice um, glass of passion fruit. Speaking my language, I will yeah. take a glass of passion fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this looking like the real deal. I mean, it's not looking like the real deal, it is the real deal. I don't deal with the runny eggs, but um, I will see if I get the belly to try it. I will see. I'm making no promises. Alright, good. This real hot. Look at this space there. Ah, passion fruit has arrived. This is your blend of passion fruit. We make our passion fruits from scratch. Mm. I will populate it with a little of this. Shadow Benny and avocado. Yes. That is two of my favorite things. Together in one sauce. Why, of course. How do I look? Breakfasty. Mm. Nice way to start the day. You pull beef. Well succulent, flavorful, and they have the little earthiness from the black beans as expected. Cheese bringing in a little salt, a little tanginess, and well, the plant. You know, let's get a little piece of the plant and let's bring that little sweet into the flavor. Very nice. Have avocado and the egg there. I'm tempted to try it, you know. You know what? Meal. Excellent, excellent. Sabroso. I'm, I'm going into you have the. Sabroso. 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 Then sabroso it is. <laughs> I'm actually, going to try some of the egg inside here, but I'm going sparingly. Okay. Right? Only because I think the recommendation is to have it the authentic way, I will do it. A cafron. It actually do something good to the to the um to the blend. It's been a nice richness. Nah, it really is like a kind of sauce for real. Eh? I learned two things today. One, a black long sleeve jersey is not the wisest thing to wear in this heat. Two, this food is very wholesome very um well, it, I, I, i'm not going to say nutritious this song like if you know it's healthy but well prepared you know well prepared without too much processed stuff you know you're tasting the real ingredients 
Um, it's a really nice experience. And that egg, I didn't believe that I like it. Honestly, I didn't believe that I like it. But do it how to do. Because everything's so balanced. Like, it have a reason why everything was on the plate. So, the egg actually come in and create a nice kind of rich sauce to wrap everything up. Yeah. I can't say I'll do it again, eh? Don't hold me to it. But it will work here. Nice. Passion fruit. Well, passion fruit, do you know passion fruit this do? I love passion fruit juice. So it's nice and tangy. It's not sweet at all. It, it's more tart than sweet. Um, nice complimenting this very well. This is a little sample of um, a chicken soup that being made right now. It's not like the usual Chinese style in um, split peas base. There's a chicken broth that mm, very um, smelling very mm, herbaceous. Mm, rich, I could see the fat content. It's gonna be nice. Mm. Nice and salty and it's full of flavor. Yeah, where are they putting this? Besides, I need mean, to never never start that back at all. But where are they putting this? Good, I'll be good. <laughs> Whatever they put in this will be good. Some dumplings. <laughs> So the next stop is Show Cafe. Now I have a cheat code when I come into Show Cafe, right? And it's hard for me to stray from it. Is the herb coated fries with arugula mayo and pork belly. I usually do that, but I'm learning things today now. See, I eat egg and all kind of thing. So I'm going on another recommendation, right? Let me go in and you'll see what our recommendation is. Good morning, welcome to Show Cafe. Would you be dining with us? We will be dining, ma'am. How many of you? Is it um, you alone today? Me and my no friends. All right, okay. <laughs> Would you like to be seated inside or outside? Inside is fine right. because outside, not playing no games. Okay, no, no problem. Play? Yes, you can. All right. Can I see some water sparkling or still? Um, cool, I could take a nice um, water, 20, 23. Okay, That'll no be problem. Fine. Thanks. So like I tell you, I have my cheat code, right? Which is the pork belly, but we're not doing that. There are plenty of nice things on the menu, right? But we all about the cheat codes today, like, the different things, right? And um, but that we give me this cheat code, which is the steak tip. So I don't order that with the cassava. Um, I don't know how the cassava coming exactly. I imagine it will be fried with some kind of niceness on it because it's show. And yeah. I couldn't do that, so I would just wait for the order and we will see where it is going on now. So I was told to order the steak tips. Yes, how mm. would you like the steak tips done? Um, the only way it had to be medium well. Medium well, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good one. Yes, good. it is. All right, that's cool. it for the order, sir. As well as the cassava. Cassava fries, mm. right? It's cassava good combinations, fries. yes. Okay, how the cassava fries is come prepared? Um, it's a sorted cassava fries. Mm. So that's on the side, mm. and we'll put the steak tip on the side, or I can do one meal for you. Mm. Okay, cool. Sounds right. good. Sounds good. All right, okay. Can no I problem. beg for a little bit of arugula, Sure. All right. Nice, All nice, right. nice. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, let's take the arugula, Mayo, just for old time's sake, and the starch and all Okay. <laughs> So I saw your order with just the cassava and the steak tips. So I mean, you can't come show cafe without ordering our classic Portuguese garlic pork, you know? So I said, let me surprise you with our Portuguese garlic pork with garlic tum and some salsa for it. Excellent surprise. I'm okay. very glad because uh -huh. I was told to use this cheat code now. Right. right? And I was happy. I was happy. Of course, it's a fulfilling but, meal. But I was always... Uh, <laughs> I love this. I awesome. love this. So I'm glad you bring it out. Thank you very much. You're most welcome, sir. Thank enjoy. you. Blessings. Yeah, that's what we talking about. 
<laughs> Alright, so out of respect, I'm gonna start with the steak tips, right? Because I really wanna jump so but that we say steak tips now, so come in here. And if you check it, nice doneness, medium well, and all the aromatics that's in it will chimichurri or salsa bay there or whatever they put on the top there. Nice. Buttery almost. Texture wise. Yeah. Dawi, your tips are good calling. And the cassava. I wasn't expecting it to come out in this format. Thinking no more the long fries. But I like this kind of salty vibes. Some nice little onions and thing on it. And the cassava itself. Look like you know, sprinkle nice little spices and things. So, you see, nice little crisp on the outside, tender, well done inside. A nice canvas still laid a steak flavor over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that way, good cheat code. Working. But, um, come to my business now. <laughs> yeah, Portuguese business. Like that crispy bit on top there. Hmm. See when a place is doing something consistently good? Points. Real points. Nice pork belly. Fattiness. Flavor. Little grill marks. Give it a nice little char, a little burn. Hmm. And then that vinegar. Jumping out. Yeah, Portuguese style. Mine sound a little fancy, it is which it is, but it's really garlic pork now. You dig? So it's a nice, I'm gonna call it upscale version of garlic pork that a nice little chart it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real rich, real flavorful. What I like about it is, even though it's intense in flavor, it's still very balanced. So you get the pork flavor coming through. Actually, the vinegar does accentuate that pork flavor. Make it nice. So this, I'm going to tell you. This, with a little um, cassava. That's a nice bite. Eating all over the place like a DJ now. <laughs> but nice. <laughs> Alright, the next stop is just a few doors down to Zazu Kitchen. Zazu, as the name sounds kind of crazy, kind of wacky, is that type of thing. It's French fusion, right? And I mean, they have some things on the menu that are real nice, but I wanted to try the Korean fried chicken because it's so interested KFC, Korean fried chicken. I want to try that. And they also have some escargot for me to try. I never tried escargot before, so we enter that, right? Come and check this out. First, we're going to start with the KFC, okay. Okay. which is Korean fried chicken, mm -hmm. uh, which is some deboned chicken thighs that has been mar marinated with a soy sauce, a little bit of sake and mirin. Mm -hmm. Mirin is a sweet kind of Japanese sake, mm -hmm. uh, with a bit of a little, just a little bit of uh, ginger, not too much. Right. And then that chicken is marinated, and then we put it in potato starch, not flour. Flour, flour will be too too heavy Can't on be. it so just a light uh, coating of potato starch with it mm -hmm. and then in a deep fat fryer uh, at a kind of a medium temperature you don't mm -hmm. want a hot hot deep fat fryer mm -hmm. who's going to really burn burn your flour we forget about it for about six eight minutes we're going to uh, do the escargot right which is something very French. So you mm. have 12, a dozen of escargot, okay, which have been poached and blanched in a corbouillon, meaning a, 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 a kind of a broth with mm. a lot of garnish, like onion, celery, leek, you know, to give it flavor because right. it's really a texture more than a flavor. Right. All right. So that's why usually the French we cook it with a raw garlic butter or mm. you know you, you need to enhance the flavor it's, it's really a texture more than a real flavor all right so we have to be careful when we do that not to 
overcook it or cook it too long okay. that it's going to become rubbery right, you know right. and chewy and rubbery that's always the dark so it's rubbery yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. so you have to be very careful when you do it you see it's a very small it's a very small thing so you definitely don't want to leave it too long in the water or cook it too long on your frying pan right. because the more you're going to cook it the, the more rubbery you're going to become okay so so you want it nice and soft and slightly chewy but not definitely not you know that yeah, you have, you have to, to, some. You have to yeah. chew it yeah. for half an hour you know before yeah. you have to you can yeah. swallow it you know? chewing gum that's right <laughs> so we serve it with some roasted cherry tomatoes mm -hmm. that that we do it you know mixed with some rosemary and thyme mm -hmm. and uh, you know we here we call it choka but it's not it's not it's not really a choka <laughs> yeah. you know it, 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 it's yeah. It's some just some kind of roasted cherry tomatoes. So, <laughs> so I'm going to start with just a thin layer of olive oil. Olive oil. <clears throat> nice and gently. No, no, nothing aggressive mm -hmm. on the escargot. Then I'm going to deglaze them with a little bit of white wine. Good spoon of butter. Okay, and then at the end, I'm gonna put a good pinch of gramolata. Gramolata, which is parsley, garlic. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I turn it off. Our escargot done. Our tomatoes ready. It's a little bit of parsley and olive oil and garlic. Okay, so I put that at the bottom. I put my tomatoes. Then I'm going to put all the oil escargot. This is a local local romaine lettuce actually that we find in the market on Saturday morning in the savanna which is nice and green and crunchy mm -hmm. and support a little bit our local our local producers. Then sometimes I add a little pinch of that red. I know Trini is like a little bit of spice. Yeah, I tried. So I add a little bit of that red spicy chili on top of it. And that's it. That's how I scargo. Normally we serve it, we serve it with some house made bread. Bread. You know, French bread. Mm -hmm. And that's how we present and serve our escargo. Back on our Korean chicken, so it should be more pretty ready by now. A little pinch of salt on it. A little bit of fresh chives. Some bonito flakes. Who's gonna give a little bit of that umami, umami flavor on it. A little pinch of sesame seeds. Pickle jalapenos. We house pickle. Young jalapenos, green jalapenos, which are a bit stronger. And then we have a little kind of spicy sauce that we use on top of it. Some cilantro. Japanese kewpie mayo, what we call a kewpie mayo. It's a Japanese style mayo, mm. okay, which is done slightly differently than a regular mayo. Uh, same thing as a nice umami, umami flavor in it, right. you know, which goes very well with the KFC. So that's our version of KFC, yeah, yeah, yeah. Korean fried chicken. <laughs> Chef, thanks for the food. You're very welcome. But this, I'm very interested in this escargot and why you put it on the menu. Because it's something, I'm, I'm, I'm a French restaurant, I'm French, mm -hmm. and that's a staple of what I want to say it's a staple of French cuisine. Yeah. You know, uh, somehow a lot of people believe the French eat escargot every day. You know, mm. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. No, no, we don't. It, mm. It's 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 a staple of French cooking, mm. sure. Mm. You know, but that's something the French will eat more on special occasions. Special occasions, uh, uh, some some family dinner or going out in a restaurant. It's not something really a lot of French people will cook at home you know, or eat at home or it's something really something very festive. We eat it 
not so often. Okay. You know. And what's your response to escargot? Uh, funny enough, you mm. know, when I put it when I put it on my menu when I started Zazu 12 years ago, mm. I I said, well, let me let me try it. And surprisingly, the Trinis like escargot. You know, it's one of my most popular appetizers on the menu. Mm. Uh, uh, so that was a pleasant surprise for me to see that the Trinis have a, you know, when. You know, when you tell people what it is, you know, people are like, oh, God, I yeah. know that. You yeah. know. And actually, it's a very popular appetizer. Yeah. Plenty, plenty of people here like escargot. Well, I, you know? looking at it and before actually jumping into it, I started thinking things like conch and, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that type of... But in one, way, in one way, it's a bit related, you know, mm. it's, 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 of course. It's, it, it can be a similar type of, the, the, the flavor the will flavor. be different, but mm. a similar type of texture. Right. You know, yeah. uh, uh, the same way you cook conch, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know? that's why I thought, and I mean, even how you, how you prepared it, it's a different preparation from how you treat conch, but I could see somebody doing the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah, with conch. Definitely and, some similarity. You know? and, and you will see it a lot in France, done the old traditional way, mm -hmm. when they use the escargot shell. Right. So they put back the escargot in, in the shell, shell then right. they put some garlic butter inside it, right. you know, and put it on a kind of a plate with some holes there, and then they pass it in the oven, and then you have it on your table with a little spoon. And a, mm. uh, uh, it's complicated here to find some escargot shells, you know. Right, so right, I had, right. had to find a different way to do it. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah. but taste-wise, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what? Enough about the theory of it. Go, go ahead, the, dig in. Let me go to the practical part. Dig in. <laughs> uh, mm, text there one time. Yeah, they have to be soft, man. Soft. You, can't, you can't have rubbery escargot. Mm. That, that's not that's not nice at all. You know. And I said it's more, you know, the seasoning. The, 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 the. Mm. Escargot by itself. If you take an escargot and eat it just so by, by itself, mm. it's so flavorful. It's about mm. the sauce. It's about yeah, yeah. The it's about the texture of it, the texture of the escargot, mm. the sauce who goes with it. You know. And, uh, yeah, it's it's actually very interesting and nice and. I think yeah, really in the in the ballpark of things like conch and that kind of finish with the texture. At yeah, least. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is well done though in terms of the texture. It's right yeah, yeah. on point. Just have a nice little bite. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? But definitely not rubbery and chewy. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. yeah, nice, interesting. This is a nice dish. Yeah, this is yeah. a nice yeah, dish. Yeah. This is the one I really came for. KFC on our menu, and then KFC Korean fried chicken is a kind of a, a blue mind that they had a taste. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the most opulent KFC <laughs> in the country right now. <laughs> Some of this mayo. Mm. Right, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, li I like using uh, chicken thighs for mm. them. You could do it, it with chicken breast, but it will, it will, it will get dry too fast. Dry, yeah, this, yeah. I was going to say this real juicy. Yeah, you can yeah. taste the Asian flavors oh, coming out, sure. yeah, yeah. both in the marinade and in the sauce. Yeah, yeah, the sauce has a little, little, mm -hmm. little kick as well. You know what I mean? All right. This is nice though. This is nice. And well, going through the menu, I came up with my own little cheat code. <laughs> this portion with the fries and probably a salad or something on the sure. side. Yeah, yeah. I think transform it into a nice entry. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And this is nice. And it's nice as well for people, you know, who wants to share and mm -hmm. you know they take three, four, five appetizers like yeah. that and you just share it, you know. Right. So other people, not me, people who want to share. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, thanks. No, you're most welcome. Most it's welcome, guys, anytime. Most you know. impressive. I um, always like the whole concept of Zazu. Um, I remember from the last time Zazu being something crazy, um, crazy and you know a little different, a little innovative. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it, it, it's I like I like uh, I, I left France a long time ago. You know, mm. so I, li I like my food. My food has been influenced by by many many type of different cuisine right you know if i had to cook just classic french food every day i think i'll, I'll, I'll get bored eventually mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. uh, i like i like playing with food yeah for sure definitely yeah. definitely yeah. Uh, by the way do you still have the uh, the rum and coke ice cream not anymore mm. 
Not that, anymore. You remember that uh, boy? Telling him that's one of the <laughs> greatest ice creams ever. Yeah. Like having that, the the whole a the idea to do it, but then b translating it into something that actually you read like rum and coke yeah, ice yeah. cream. Well, like. Yeah, yeah, that's the hardest. You know, sometimes it's not only having something in mind; mm. it's being able, you know, to, to uh, execute to it. Execute it. Yeah, and of course come mm. with experience you know and, mm. and uh, but yeah sometimes you have to brain you have to brain watch you know and yeah. uh, think hard about it yep. how you're going to make it yeah that, that's when i became a fan that yeah. rub and cook ice cream was like wow yeah well, I'll, I'll make some i'll make some for you ah, i'll make some for you bro we haven't done that for a while actually mm, mm. Well, i'll well, yeah. make some for you all right for that that's a done deal nice thanks <laughs> <chef. laughs> you're welcome <laughs> next up is papadums. Papadums is authentic Indian cuisine. So it's curry, but not like a local Trini curry. And that on the landscape too, right? Different developments now, we're developing. Now, papadums have some nice flavors going on here. Your tandoori and your paneer and thing, things that on the grill, real colorful, nice things to even look at. But the thing about here is they're real consistent. They could depend on them to deliver a good meal every time, right? Grab and go stuff, you can sit down and dine, but Enough talk, let me go and check it out. I resorted to my guide today to make sure that the plate looks nice now. You know? um, recommendations from her has always been nice, and you'll see why a little later on too. So, Cherise, there's the guide. So, everything mm. is good, but. Of course. I would recommend the chicken tikka masala. Right. As the protein. Mm -hmm. um, tandoori paneer. Right. Lovely. For the rice, we're going with turmeric lemon. It's mm -hmm. something that they do special here. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's really traditional. Right. We have to get a anan. I'll mm -hmm. go with the onion culture. Onion culture, right. Nice. Right. Can't go wrong. And for the veg, the bendido payas is okra. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Love it. I think that's... I did. I did with that. Yeah. We have a little bit of everything to try and I think that will be a good base for us today. Yeah, let me try that. <laughs> let me roll that up. Something nice. It's a stuffed naan, so mm. the inside is um, the onion, the as opposed onion, to right. the traditional flat naan that is just, you know, oil mm. or ghee on top with, you know, rosemary right. or whatever. This actually has a filling, so it should be, should be nice, I think. I will start here. I will start here with this naan. Um, my personal favorite, mm -hmm. out of everything, would always be the veg, the, the okra. The okra. Mm -hmm. It can't be targeted okra. Uh, okra is so an I would important say, thing. Start here. This. Start here. This is here. You go in here then. You go in here then. Rich and this. Mm -hmm. mm. right. Chicken. Chicken tikka on the side here because I mean foundation thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I am. That's a little thing. A piece of the meat. We know, we know.
Mm. The caramelized onion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see the vision? Did I lie? A little underlying smokiness kind of seen. Curry, strong, nice and spicy. Okay, okay. A little onion in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, couple things. That is a proper scene. That's a proper scene. This, that is my that is my favorite. What, I could order that on rice. What I would say is it might not be the star of the show, right? Ah. It might not be the star of the no. show. But I think it's a must have on your plate. Nice fight, nice fight in words. That's right, yeah. Nice fight in words. I think so. Because to me the uh, the okra is the star. This is that. The okra even that on regular basmati rice. Okay, okay. As a meal. Mm. They don't need much. Another an unfight. A budget friendly meal as well. Another an unfight. It's not gonna be my you're, 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 not, you're not going to eat the naan by itself. It, it, you're going to eat the naan It's not going to be my star okay, show. Fine, it's not going to be my Michael Jordan. All right, but it'll right. definitely be my... The Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? My James Woody. Ah, okay, 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 okay. It'll all be right. my James Woody. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. It's going to be my Horace Grant. So you're trying to say the opera just, you know? Strong supporting role. Strong supporting Strong supporting role. role. All right. Yeah? Yeah, all right. All right. Okay, okay. I can could, I could, I could live with that. I can live with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I disagree. Mm. I think the, the okra is really elite. But to each his own. Mm. Try it. You'll like it. You only have to try is the, the paneer. The paneer, yes. Yeah. I haven't had this one as yet. Mm. So this is probably our first time trying it together. Is it tandoori paneer? Yeah, this one here. Mm -hmm. They're looking good. Go. I've tried the tandoori shrimp. Mm. Justice. Mm. Again, you always catch me with that smokiness, eh? See that smoky char flavor? You always catch me with that. I think I'm on your favorite, you know? Mm. Yeah. Beyond your girl? <laughs> the engine. Yeah. You're really picking up for that, girl. But the, nah, this. It's nice, though. Yeah. It's nice. That creaminess of the char balancing nice. I mean, yeah. It's a nice side. For me, it will have to be the, the tandoori paneer. Mm. And of course, my staple is the okra, but the okra. a lot the naan. I mean, everything on the plates. Singing. Flawless. Singing. Sing yeah. Mm. But you could find something that you will like in this, in this menu. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Next up on the tour. It's St. James Marketplace, right? We're gonna talk about something that we hardly talk about when we're talking about Trini food and Trinidadian food, which is pizza. And mm -hmm. Cherise here again as a guide because Cherise have a pizza, a, a, a special a pizza, special, special, special pizza yeah. by Kaiso City Pizza, right? So um, I don't know what it involves, but we're gonna find out now. Then? Yeah, yeah. it's a food. No, it's a food. Hmm. So, is something much you came up with for mm -hmm. me? I will ask them one day just to freestyle, give me something different. I didn't want a typical marinara based sauce or pizza. So it is an olive oil based pizza. Olive oil based, olive oil -based pizza. pizza. Right. Sliced garlic, mm -hmm. fresh tomatoes, mm -hmm. roasted corn, jalapenos, mm -hmm. pickled onions, topped with ar arugula, mm -hmm. a sprinkling of goat cheese, mm -hmm. and to finish off, a shadow bunny oil. Mm. So something will be something sweet, something rich, spicy, spicy. Creamy, yeah, because that will, that will give it a little citrusy kind of yeah. sharp kick. Yeah, mm, it's an interesting thing. But yeah. plenty, sounds like plenty flavors going on. It but sounds like plenty, mm. but the combination right. of it is very well balanced. Mm -hmm. It is light, it refreshing, mm -hmm. and I think that is what I wanted. Right. So he he perfected it as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So you know, try it. Ah, well, do I do I ask me twice or <laughs> All right, here you go. Mm. So you have, um, as your base, you have sliced garlic and olive oil. Um, it has sliced tomatoes, jalapenos, roast corn, pickled onion, arugula, goat cheese, and shadow bunny oil. Wow, is that? Wow, is that? And of course, you have your basil and stuff, which is standard. Mm. So, hope I mean, you all enjoy, man. Straight up, 
And if I hear them in the region, <laughs> all together. All well, I mean, pizza. in Kaiso, you know, so mm -hmm. Trini style pizzas, you must have your roast corn, you must have, you know, the homegrown stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I hope I hope you enjoy, man. I I feel I will. Well, let me dig in now. Yeah. How, how to approach this, boy? I see all the. All well, the green what here. I do is mm. I take a slice and, and then I grab. And it with <laughs> my, uh, roast corn, you know. Hmm. What's that, Rita? Yo, I'm ready. Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. not still getting bright. <laughs> it's changing. Mm -hmm. It's definitely light. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But then, I guess sweetness. And then acidity come from nowhere. Yeah. And then they get a little sting from the original. Jalapeno, yeah. And the, jal the jalapeno. Yeah. Then they get a little sweetness again. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then the goat cheese do it something else. And the tomato, because it's fresh. Well, and the little hints are shallow, but the end is like perfection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always tell people, a uh, veggie pizza done right. It's a hard thing to beat, eh? Huh? Yeah. 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 You could, anybody could throw meat on pizza. Mm -hmm. But to really get a good vegetarian pizza means that you have to actually put some thought into the ingredients Correct. so that you're, you're composing on it. Because and you don't me, have the benefit of just random fat, you right. know what I mean? Yeah, you can't, there's nothing to hide behind. Mm -hmm. So for a veggie pizza to be real boss is proper care, thought, everything. And the crust, the crust also, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, Matthew perfect this crust over the period yeah, of time yeah, that yeah. Was out. Mm-hmm. So. Normally people put you know a little sweet corn here and there, but yeah. they say they actually roast it first. Yeah, mm -hmm. they get all you know smokiness coming through. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Right now I'm not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this off the chain though. Yeah. This. Mm. Alright, we're on the last stop. Some nice spots, but you see this spot. A uh, foundation in the food industry, um, 1980 there about, with legacy from Alison Hennessy, people like Holly B. Toad, the and thing involved in this, and when I say involved, the name, Vini Marge. If you didn't know, Vini Marge means come and eat. So, um, come and eat a food. You see what I do there? Yeah? <laughs> so, what you say? Check this magic, right? But I don't know what I'm drinking. Ah, boy. Stew beef, it's stew beef. Stew beef? Yeah, stew beef. Between the stew beef and the stew pork in ginger. Yeah. Which one you feel? Stew beef. Stew beef? Yeah. I'm going to do your recommendation, stew beef. Why yeah, you do that? And it come in with what? Alright, we can do that. That's something like a meal, you know? That's something like a meal. Alright, Roses. <laughs> I don't do this often, you know? honestly. Really? Like sit up and talk to people uh, about yeah. certain things. When okay. so it comes to food, I like to come and eat. Nice. And make my decisions on my own. Okay. But this place kind of special to me. Hey, what? Why? It is a foundation place in the landscape in terms of creating food. Right. right. So I wanted to find out from you, um, firstly, how important is it to you to carry on this legacy? Because it is a legacy. A multifaceted question. Mm -hmm. In the sense that, I mean, we've been doing it. December the 1st will be 43 years in the business. That's a long, 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 long time. Obviously, I started it when I was about six years old, obviously, right? <laughs> obviously, about two. But two? Yeah. Love it. No, well, we came back and established, we came back from Alison and myself, my late sister Alison Hennessy, television personality. We felt that it was so necessary to have a West Indian Creole food restaurant because and in those days, 43 years ago, you had Chinese restaurants, the hotels and so. And every friends from abroad would come down and say, well, we want to eat West Indian food. And outside of your home, there was nowhere. So we started it. Alison's a quarter chef. Anyway, move on 43 years later. 
Uh, of course, you see what the landscape is like when it comes to restaurants, when it comes to the food industry, when it comes to what is being offered in the culinary field. And that's good, there's nothing against it. But there is a lack of West Indian Creole local food in an establishment, let's say, like this. Because normally the rest of it is just street food. And maybe I'm being naive, but I do think that there's a market, particularly when you know you have people from abroad come, come down and they want to taste local food. And where do they go outside of me? There's nothing against street food. But it's nice to be able to offer local, authentic, West Indian home cooked food in a, a an environment like this. Mm -hmm. So the legacy of it is important, but like everything else, times change, mm -hmm. and so we just have to see which path we're going down now. Cool. We keep trying. Good effort, excellent effort, and thanks a lot for your time. I'm glad you came. And by the way, I keep you longer. Than and it's a good thing I said I didn't want to talk. <laughs> I talk through the whole damn thing. <laughs> Do you see chairs? <laughs> so what you have is a real tuny thing, right? You have a little ramekin here, a little bowl of lentils, right? Stew lentils is called. A little sauteed veg. You have your rice, you know, veggie rice. You have this salad, it might be a potato, it might be a green fig, I'll tell you when I get into it. And your little vegetables here for health and strength, right? Then the star of the show, the stew beef. You then, ah, things. Banana fritters. Blessings, thank you, sir. The stew beef. Just from the color of the stew beef. You know, whoever conducting this understand the scene, right? They understand that you had to get that sugar burnt to a certain point, right? And put it in at the precise time to get this color that will deliver that flavor. You dig? That stew flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to taste that. I don't think it's going to disappoint. Got a little bit under? Mm -hmm. Pumpkin, carrot, that little sweetness, earthy. Mm -hmm. Green fig salad. Mm -hmm. Rich and creamy. The lentils doing what lentils, it lentils in now. Lentils, right? You see when you get lentils again, they're that kind of, that kind of smoky, earthy flavor. Yeah, lentils on point. Mm -hmm. The main attraction. I'm looking around to see who else tastes that now. Because powerful. Hmm. It's not only the architecture and thing here and the ambience, like you know, foundation, you know, I don't know. This stew is real old school stew. Like it's rich. It it the flavor as dark as it look real tasty. The fat, the fat from the beef. Tasting that fat melt out into the sauce, right? Hmm. The stew on point, like I say, they catch it at the right time. So you get a little caramelized sugar. Get a little hint of sugar before. Then go into that dark rich flavor that absorb all that beef, you know, all that beef flavor. Yeah. And of course, the tender, you know, texture on point. Yeah. This, this, I mean, it might as well be, be Sunday and at home, yeah, that's on, <laughs> rock back, watching some kind of TV or something, this is like home food, excitement. I'd expect it, but I didn't expect it. You think? Yeah. You have any? You have any? Yeah. So, thanks for coming with us on this little journey through the, mm, part slightly less of the eating part right and keep in mind when you're traversing the culinary landscape 
Trinidad have plenty to offer, real plenty to offer, nice little fusions and things, stuff that you know we building over the years. But keep in mind that these little gems interspersed, right, are doing some good stuff. And you can show you a different side of Trinidad, right? So, when you visit Trinidad, boom. So the next stop is Show Cafe in One Woodbrook Place. Now, I have a cheat code when I come in here, right? I usually do the hood coated. <laughs> <laughs> I 